Technology allows dissidents around the world to communicate freely, to access information and get their voices heard. But at the same time, ordinary people are under constant attack on the internet. I want to talk to you about three ideas that define the times we live in now and one idea that will define the future. Everything is just chronology. For a decade and a half, I've been a book publisher. I've been uh, pu publishing beautiful physical books to fill tiny little niches. And years ago, when traditional publishing felt attacked by new texts, news and chat and Facebook and message boards, and saying that the only proper way to read was through a book. And saying that those who read on the internet became stupid. I thought, that's just chronology. If we had been reading long texts on small electronic devices for hundreds of years, with access to anything written at the tips of our fingers, the person inventing the physical book would have to demonstrate that the physical book had something more to offer than just being a medium for transporting words from author to reader. Those are the books that I've been publishing. Beautiful objects that you want to keep, that enhance not only the experience of reading, but your relationship to the author whose work you are reading. So in these times, when we read more words than ever before, the flow of words through which we wade can be paused once in a while and brought into the physical world where we live for those few authors and those few texts that you love the most. And why is everyone surprised? that people love to binge-watch TV series on Netflix or Hulu, or resort to pirating them online. It just turns out that people never really wanted to pay lots of money for bundles of cable channels, so they could make sure to watch each episode at the same time each week one episode each week, every Friday at 7 p.m. The VCR proved that much. People never wanted to study the TV schedule or, or channel surf for hours each day. They wanted to decide what to watch and when to watch it. It was just chronology. It just so happened that the first invention that brought enough bandwidth into homes to stream these TV series onto the retinas of the eyes of the audience. This was a stupid one-way pipe. If we had been watching beautiful dramas and scary movies and cheesy TV series, whenever we wanted, and we knew no other way, then the person trying to sell us a cable subscription would have to come up with some real reason, something tangible, why we would want that. And who in their right mind actually believed that it was a good idea to sell music albums on plastic discs? Okay, it made sense as long as the bandwidth of the physical CD being carried from music store to music listener was higher uh, than any other communication technology. But that changed a long time ago. And this goes for anything where you can say, there's an app for that. TV and movies are just apps. Music is an app. The old methods for communicating this technology uh, this culture, sorry, a chronological anomaly that sparked the copyright wars, pitching a younger generation 
against old ideas. A connected people against an unconnected history. And here's an interesting and hard question for the future. What if the state is just a chronological anomaly too? We needed a way to find our place in a big and scary world and help each other and work together to build schools and hospitals and roads and other things that are not apps. But the state lives on, making it seem like we're different, that those who live in different countries deserve different things. But we're all from planet Earth. It no longer makes sense that each state only looks out for its own citizens and spy on everyone else, build databases full of information about what people have done, what they've said, and who they've been communicating with, and make laws to regulate what people may say. This is why we can't ban the good guys, normal people like you and me, from using technology for it to its full potential to do good. Around the world, there are many efforts, right now particularly in the UK, to hamper the use of cryptography in communications. But you know what? That only stops normal people, quite innocent people, from using technology to stay safe online. The British government says it wants a backdoor to any cryptography used in, in communication so that it can listen in when terrorists talk to each other. But it's not possible to have a backdoor in cryptography uh, that doesn't also let in attackers. And you know what? If we make the internet less secure in order to break the crypto used by the bad guys, the first people to switch away from that broken technology are the bad guys. So Sweden, I'm Swedish, a couple of years ago enacted a law that said that the military intelligence agency could listen in to any internet communication crossing the Swedish border. Because it crossed the border, they said, the government was not listening in to all communications by Swedish people. But you know what? I use Gmail. Uh, people still use Hotmail for some reason. <laughs> people are on Facebook every single day. People use communication technology like Skype, which means that even if I Skype with my next-door neighbor, I have no idea how much of that technology crosses the Swedish border twice or more times in order just to reach my neighbor. And you know who will not be using Gmail or Hotmail or Skype? The bad guys. The terrorists that are being hunted while all our civil rights are sacrificed along the way are the first to switch away from this broken technology. That means that the only people the Swedish military ag intelligence agency will be spying on are normal, innocent Swedish people. And what about, about everyone who is not Swedish? What gives us the right to spy on them? Why do we want to do to everyone else what the US, the UK, France and Russia do to us. The world has been united because of the internet. And it's time uh, that politicians start thinking about what their local politics mean to all people. Because we are all human and we all have human rights. As a computer scientist, I find politics fascinating. Politics should be about deciding what is the best way forward from a particular situation. But more and more, politics has become an argument about facts. And there should be no argument about facts, right? 
there should be some objective truth on which we can base our analysis. And then we use technology to decide what to do next, to fix the problem, to decrease the taxes, to increase the taxes, or whatever. Because everyone appears to be arguing about if things really happened, and if they did, how much they happened. And for some reason, journalists and politicians are failing us in showing the truth and questioning made-up facts and propaganda. Instead, news outlets have become, become megaphones for that propaganda. And in the hunt for clicks, they fired their journalists and they hired people to link to funny cat videos. Politicians become populists, working only for those who provide the money. But here's an interesting idea. We are all scientists these days. We can help dig out and uncover the truth because of technology. So we should really put technology to work for us, to work for the truth. Scientists use technology to study nature, the world around us, to find out about the universe, what it's made of and how it functions, and the people in it. And in a not insignificant way, that is what people on YouTube do every day, on Facebook, on Instagram and Ravelry. Even if politicians have long forgotten, we know that together we're greater than the sum of every single person. When a knitter tries a new pattern and shares it on Ravelry, or a carpenter uploads a new video which references previous uh, YouTube videos showing carpentry, they are almost literally building on what people have done before them. We understand that no, not one of us is a lone genius. Humanity is great because we work together. No single human is a divine fountain of new ideas. Every single thing that is invented, every word that is written, every song that is sung, is based on what we've been doing since the dawn of humanity. And this is the scientific method to understand what others have done before, to think and then to make. To ponder a new knitting pattern, to make a new one and to share it on Ravelry. To try a new po uh, method of drilling pocket holes, to create a new kind of jig and upload a video of it on YouTube. We're simply driven by the curiosity of living many lives in this single life that we have been allotted. Driven by curiosity and helped by technology. So we can use technology, in this case the internet in particular, to improve on many things in society the availability of information, the access to services, a greater understanding of the world and the people in it. But we can also use it to improve on processes that are fundamental to our societies, fundamental to democracy. Take electronic voting, which is my passion. On the surface, it allows more people to vote, perhaps from the comfort of their home and it allows a faster, more accurate count of the votes. But look a bit more closely, and you can see that technology can provide so much more than traditional processes ever could. We can add verifiability. And this is the grand idea for the future. Something that you can develop in everything that you do and that you, that you can demand from your government. We all understand the importance of transparency. 
transparency in what we do, and especially in what people in power do, people in government. Transparency helps us understand the decisions they make, helps us keep them in check, and helps those in power stay away from corruption and stay true to the people they serve. And the fight for transparency has been going on for as long as we've had societies. And it will go on forever. Verifiability takes this further. Let me explain what verifiability is. Imagine a black box. It's just a box, but stuff happens in it. So in a black box, you put stuff in, something happens, and stuff comes out. But you have no idea and you have no way of knowing if the things that come out are based on the things that went in. Now imagine a transparent box. Things go in and other things come out, but you can glimpse the things that happen inside the box so you can be reasonably sure that what comes out is based on what went in. But in a verifiable box, things go in, but you don't care what happened inside the box, because you can verify that the things that went in are the basis for the things that came out. In, verifi in verifiable electronic voting, this allows me as a voter to verify that my vote has been counted, and together we can all verify that the outcome of the election is correct. And it doesn't matter how many people were involved in the counting, or how many observers were present in the polling stations, because we can verify that the outcome of the election is truly based on the votes that were cast. And because of this verifiability, it helps politicians avoid corruption. Because if they steal the election, they will be found out. And this is where I want to show you this. This is a ballot form that you may have seen me demonstrate in a previous talk. And in this simple piece of paper, is where the people wrestle the power over elections from corrupt politicians and where technology places it firmly in the hands of the people. So on the left side of this ballot form are the names of the candidates that are running in the election in a random order for this ballot form. And on the right-hand side, I can fill out my preference. And when I tear the ballot form, like this, what I have done as a human being with so little computing power is I've encrypted my vote. And when this vote goes into the election, no one knows how I voted, but I can verify that my vote has been counted. This is a kind of transparency that we need. We need verifiability. And if I can inspire you today to do one thing, it is to think about the future as verifiable. Be scientists. Be scientists and find out the truth. And demand verifiability from those in power. So they can realize that things are changing that we are one people, curious about life, wanting to live freely, making the world a better place. Thank you.